Some time ago, a few years back now, I was standing at the spot where this miracle took place. As you may know, some of these places in subsequent centuries suffered serious damage under persecution essentially. And this was a case in point. One can still just about celebrate on the bit of rock remaining. And it is an unbroken tradition that that's where this took place. It's now in the hands of German Benedictines and it is fitting that it should be a place of prayer. For after all, the Eucharist which this foreshadows is the centre of our life until the end of time. We have here to do with therefore what the Lord is giving us to understand already in so far as he has power over matter. Matter is not indifferent given that we are body and soul and we have a place in geography and history. As it happens, geography and history enters into the liturgy of this day, Letare, hence the rose colour, joy. Because the ancient tradition was already present in the time of Gregory the Great, 540 to 604, that this would be the start seal of Holy Cross in Jerusalem. Now, in Jerusalem is deliberate. It's one of the seven major basilicas in Rome, but it's called in Jerusalem because along with the major relics of the cross, discovered by St. Helena, mother of Constantine, they brought great chunks of earth as well, so as to have a bit of Jerusalem in the eternal city. Now, therefore, the Lord is born into a tabernacle of which all the rest is a foreshadowing, and he's giving us the fullness. Now that fullness we share with all Christians throughout the world who have what came from the upper room. To be clear, one does fulfil one's Sunday obligation by going minimally now to any valid celebration of the sacred mysteries. Therefore, as Catholics, if one goes to a Protestant celebration, one has also to go to a valid celebration somewhere along the line. There are borderline cases. If one finds oneself in a high Anglican celebration, one actually does not fulfill the obligation because despite the trimmings, the real presence is not there and the holy sacrifice neither. If one goes to a celebration which is under the jurisdiction of the Society of St. Pius X, one does minimally fulfill the obligation because it is fully valid. If one goes to a celebration in any part of the Eastern Bloc, any right of the Eastern Bloc, also in Dublin, one does minimally fulfill the obligation because they have what we have under a different right. It's the same force and the same presence. The priesthood is unchanging. Which brings me to where I want to land. The baptism of Kiev around 900. That block, you know the story, don't you? Which right, which form shall we embrace? And they sent legates around the Christian world and two came back from Constantinople in an ecstatic mode. Having gone into Santa Sofia, Hagia Sofia, now unfortunately a mosque, they were mesmerized and they came back saying, we did not know whether we were in heaven or on earth. And the reaction was immediate, that's what we want. And so they all got it. And by the way, if one wants a lift, go to three hours of the other in any Eastern Rite. It doesn't do any harm at all. I'm not saying to choose freely between one or the other, 
I'm just saying if you want the experience, which will give you something of where we've come from, because if they've got, remember now, the eastern bit, and we have eastern roots. As time went on, it came eventually to Rome, which was going to be very important, and although bits of Greek and Hebrew carried on, Kyrieleison, Hosanna, and so on, Amin, at that point it was decided for all countries depending on Western culture, we would have Latin. So it was the first instance of translating into local language. And as you know, Pope Damasus commissioned Jerome, St. Jerome to give a good translation in the Latin spoken, the Vulgate Latin, which became the Bible of the West. I make a jump. We have, therefore, Jesus in the midst, the same Jesus as our brethren in Kiev, and in the whole of the Eastern Bloc, where Jesus is honoured as he ever was, with the language of mind, body and heart, which always functions when sincere. It just happens, and man disappears. A lesson unto us, by the way. A priest is not a DJ. He doesn't exist in his humanity. It's over to someone greater. And woe betide the priest who says, in virtue of what he's doing greatly before other people, how great I am. And it's happening. There is a story behind this. It's called Our Lady of Vladimir. But I believe that the original was actually at Byzantium, Constantinople. And the tradition is that it went from one place to another. I believe it was for a good while at Kiev itself, and went to Vladimir, and then to Moscow. Now these new patriarchs, in the sense that they're not one of the five original, are very important. The Moscow Patriarchate is actually huge in influence, politically and spiritually. And remember that Russia has a long track record of very great mystics and saints, not to be brushed aside lightly, as though we had it all. The likes of Seraphim of Sabbath, and so on and so forth. Monks by the thousand, hermits, also. Now, in the whole wave of satanic persecution of Christians, we can see the rage of hell against all this. So hit hard! Get rid of all that is holy. Let Russia be a starting point for destruction. And we know how successful it was. There's no human explanation for it. It's just purely the power of Satan. But many things happened under that terrible time of persecution, even in the realm of icons. The icon is chrismated. The writer of an icon, iconograph, has to go into prayer and fasting for a good while before starting and has to obey all the canons of writing an icon and it is to be read in mode. Well, one time, at the heart of the communist persecution, there was a group of sisters together before an icon, praying and asking for guidance and discernment, knowing that there was a terrible time ahead. What shall we do? They were on their knees before the icon. And suddenly, this icon, covered in centuries of smoke and incense, started to behave. As they looked, the Mother Superior said, each one must write down what she sees at this point for history. And they all wrote the same thing. Starting at the top, before their very eyes, the soot and smoke of centuries cleared. 
the original colors, bright and celestial, appeared centimeter by centimeter. And the angels left their signature at the bottom right hand corner they left a bit as it was lest we forget their passage now in the west we have icons but we have three dimensional art as well and things happen there also where heaven accept the honour paid to heaven through earth. We don't worship the icon or the statue, we honour the one represented. I'm still in contact with Paul Clare's professional adoration in Italy, more than one government, because I was much involved with them. And in one, there were two physical perpetual miracles all the time there, both concerned with that. One was in the convent chapel itself. On the left is the sleeping Christ, sleeping in death. Way back, they had finished everything and they were, with all their feminine skill, trying to get the face of the Lord perfect. I believe they were using sacred things to do it with, used alternating, that kind of thing. And they were frustrated because despite their expertise, they just couldn't get it right. But it was time to retire. They couldn't go on because they have to have adoration all night and things have to be kept minimally in order, time-wise. So the superior gave the order to retire and will carry on in the morning. What was their surprise when in the morning they came into church and found that the angels had completed the work? The face was perfect beyond any human skill, and it's there to this day. The other, in another part of the convent, that's an old community, going right back, it was the crucifix. Not the main crucifix of the chapel itself, but another. And what happened is this. Way back, an anti-clerical gentleman came in with a gun and started to shoot at what he hinted on the representation of Christ, the crucifix. And the crucifix behaved! And it's behaving to this day. The legs of the crucifix have drawn themselves back to avoid the bullets. So the Lord is truly honoured or dishonoured by what represents him. <coughs> Likewise, not far outside Rome, I venerated a similar one. This time, not the crucifix, but the instrument of its destruction. Some anti-Catholic gentleman came in earlier in time, the time stem of the sword, and did that very same thing against the crucifix, attacked it, and the sword turned back on itself, and is still turned back on itself to this day. In another spot, not far from our monastery in Italy, of which, by the way, the superiors just died, Gavondre, God rest him, he was a saint. There is a place where a knight was struck by grace. I will no longer use my sword to shed blood. Here, I surrender all. Plonk! He put his massive sword in a gigantic rock and it entered in and it's still there to the hill to this day and there until death he prayed before the now venerable cross San Galgano you could visit it in the province of Siena we all know of statues that have been weeping 
and we've been analysing things scientifically, and we found, for instance, that where they've been weeping blood, it's the same blood as that of the Holy Shroud and of Eucharistic miracles. That is interesting. But I want to return for a second to where I started. This week, a historic moment happened, given the threat of Russia. It is believed that one reason why the words of the third secret of Fatima weren't fully made known directly were that they contained something which could encourage Russia at the time to do the very thing it wanted to. Now, it would seem that something of that right now is being averted. Our Lady meant what she said. She wanted this to be seen as direct intervention of her Immaculate Heart, clear and explicit. But we have to do our part! My friends, what did she ask for the six times at Fatima? Something we can all do, from the smallest to the greatest. Five decades of the Holy Rosary. <coughs> if we're too busy to do that, no matter how great the business is, we're too busy. Let's have the humility to listen to our Blessed Mother and hand over all unto her. I believe that we've lived this last week a moment of cosmic history.